Any more? Any more? Two twos, Charlie. Come on. Another pound. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, if you really, really want... Okay, let's, let's do this thing. Is the camera running? <laughs> okay. Having broken everything. So, usual rules, everything has to be in rhyme uh, and the mouse isn't supposed to work. Oh, here we go. Making games with mono game by Rob Miles. Is this recording? Yeah, perfect. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not wearing the microphone. Shall I put the microphone? I've got to clip it now. What happens? How does this work? Ooh, hello. Ah, that went well. I and mean, then this can go on here. Is that all right? Do you care? Does anyone care? No. Depths I have plumbed. Right. Making Games of Monogame by Rob Miles in rhyme and possibly a tutu. There you are. I'm just being very generous to my followers, both of them. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So, just why would you want to write games? There are plenty of them to be had. And though you might say they all look the same, for a few, the gameplay's not too bad. There's nothing to stop you creating. You might have the next big idea. And if you sell all the things you are making, you might all be rich this time next year. Uh, no, this is not guaranteed. Uh, and you might not be much better looking either. Sorry and all that. Moving on. But what's X and A, I'm hearing you saying? The name doesn't mean much to me. But for game makers who don't want to be paying, you can use it to make games for free. It was developed by a software giant, though it's passed into the open of late. And on Monogame, we are now reliant to maintain this game framework so great. You see, this is actually proper. It does actually rhyme. It's going places. Yeah. So am I. Moving on. So, last time I talked of Monogame, I did something that's a no-no. I must admit now with some shame, I made fun of their logo. <laughs> It's new again and rather nice, a much simpler blend of letters. There is no need to pork fun twice. The new one looks much better. Z <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, X and A is just a big framework where the program and assets you park. It's all the things that make a game work and you can write all the code in C Sharp. When you've made something of which you are proud, you can package it up for the market. All kinds of platforms are allowed, Windows, Apple, and Android for starters. Close enough for me. So if making games is where you're headed, or you want to use games to learn code, X and A is not a thing to be dreaded, is the one message that comes from this ode. Simple games you can make that pass muster in the milieu of casual games, and you can build them all without getting flustered in C Sharp with nice variable names. Good this, isn't it? I like this. Oh, this is good. The meter's changed. We're all aghast. Perhaps this bit will bring some laughs. I wouldn't bank on it. The subject, it has also changed. And now we talk, what is a game? We all, we know it's code, the stuff that runs. But what else is it that brings us fun? Zzz. What is a game? The question's there. Let's try and get ourselves to care. A game's a program, that much we know. And assets into games must go. Pictures and sounds make gameplay better. And text as well. Nice looking letter. Z. It's best if these are organised, not in a mess we might despise. The good news is, is it can all, that it can all go and live in Visual Studio. It's good, isn't it, this? And there's the, there's the solution explorer and all the stuff. Right, fine. Moving on. The things a game does, there are three. And what they are, we now will see. The first thing that happens when it starts is loading all the asset parts. Load content does this little job. From file to program, it does lob. The assets that you've carefully built with hopefully no copyright guilt. Simpsons sound effects don't go there. Once the contents fetch, the game can run. At last, the gameplay has begun. What happens next, I can relate, is repeated calls to draw and update. Draw puts the pictures on the screen and update runs behind the scenes to keep the game world running true and make a place to play for you. <coughs> Technical slide. Sorry about this. That's how it works. That is the game and there's low content and there's update and there's draw and these are all called and that's not in rhyme and I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> Sniff. So if a game you want to code, these are the things you need to know. Just put the code in these methods three and it will work. 
eventually. C sharp is what you actually write, a language that we all do like. And when you've made your game so cool, if you don't publish, you're a fool. Get it in the marketplace, people. That's an important message. The first step to make your, you take to make your game work is to get hold of the monogame framework. That's not as hard as you might think. Just browse on down the following link. There's templates there for lots of devices. You can sell your games at profitable prices. You might not think that I'd invent an all new cheese game just so I can use a huge number of cheese puns, would you? You might not think that, absolutely not. Uh, but in, there you are. <laughs> That's where we're going. And remember, this is as good as it gets. Yes, right. Cheese Fall is quite a simple game. You might find the action rather tame. Halo, it's not, if we're being fair. But everyone must start somewhere. Cheese will fall down from the sky. We must avoid it or we die. And don't imply I'll sue for slander. This, cheese, this game is quite unlike Cheese Lander, which is, ah, 20 downloads. I've pledged the earnings of this game to Comic Relief and it's cost me 20 quid. <laughs> yes! Fantastic. To make the game, we'll need some sprites. They'll make the action really nice. They will fall down at random speeds. To avoid them is what the player needs to do. We'll use C sharp because it's easy to keep the action nice and cheesy. And do you think we'll use a class? The answer is you bet your bottom dollar. Fine. <laughs> Four things about a sprite we need if our game development is to succeed. Position on the playfield area, vectors do this well. The place to do the drawing of the graphics card to tell. The texture for the picture to make the sprite look swell. And the speed of movement when the sprite has fell. It's all good. This method lives inside the cheese. And does the drawing for us, please. It figures out the place on screen for the sprite rectangle to be seen. The final item in the sprite we make is the constructor that will take the values we make the cheese anew and members put them all in too. Love the pun. You know the puns? No one cares about the puns? Right, fine, I'll keep going. I don't care. To make a cheese is our intent. We do this in our load content. The method runs when X and A brings out your new game to play. To make things appear, we use draw. Why didn't we think of this before? What you see above will show to you why the background's cornflower blue. Favourite colour in all the world, not. The final thing I must relate is what happens when the game updates. In this case, there is no need to frown. We simply make our cheese move down. This all work just works in the great tradition because Vector 2 supports addition. Heads being shaken, that's a good sign, that's a positive sign. So, I'm going to show you some, some code demo now, because, well, you've all paid, and it would seem cruel not to. Uh, so here we go, I've got to find the program. Would it be in Red Nose Day? I think it will be. And then we go in demos, and then we go in single cheese, and then we open it up. And it gets so exciting. And this cheese is going to fall down, and you're all going to go nuts for the recording, OK? Sound like a hundred people. Oh, <laughs> well, fair enough. Hey, right, OK, local machine, here we go. So what's going to happen is the cheese is going to fall Woo! down the screen. <laughs> Thank you, very good. Although there was someone at the back that wasn't joining in. <sighs> Terrible. Right, so stop that because it served its purpose, didn't get much of a laugh, but I can live with that, I'm used to that. So you've seen the falling cheese demo, you're all happy with that. Now to get some gameplay fun, we have to bring in player one. They move about the bottom row, avoiding cheese that downward flow. The way it works is just the same as how we put our cheese in our game. The only change is how it rolls. It's by a gamepad that it's controlled. Gamepads are easy, it turns out. Use buttons to move the player about. If right is pressed, we add to X. If left is down, subtract instead. To stop the player running away, we need a way to make them stay. The solution is clear. I have a suspicion we need to clamp their X position, otherwise they can hide over here, which is bad. So we do that as well. Fantastic. The final thing we need to add 
is, if, is to make sure that things go bad. If player with the cheese, they do collide, it's game over. Cheesy side. <laughs> to sort this out to best effect, we use rectangle intersects. So if the cheese hits the player, it's game over. Okay, that's how it works. Games work best as state machines to keep their status nice and clean. Ours will just have two, moreover. Playing's one, the other's game over. The one, the thing that it draws, it does depend on whether the game is playing or ends. So if the game's playing, we draw the player and the cheese. And if the game's not playing, we draw the game over picture. I shall say, is everyone okay with that? Because it's my lecture trademark. Thank you. I'm getting nods at the back. Thank you. Game over is a sprite as well. The end of it, its message will tell. Note how we use the viewport size so that over the entire screen it lies. And there it is. That's game over in its, in its gloriousness. That's, and now you want to see a game over demo? <laughs> I'll take that to the bank. Game over demo, yes. And again, when it works, huge round of applause, cheers, everything else for the recording. Uh, make it sound like you care. Run the program. The cheese will fall down the screen, hit the player, and the game will end. Meow. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> Great. Falling cheese. OK, so we'll stop that one, and we'll keep going. I think the word relentless is probably what I'm looking for here. Gameplay like this, it seldom pleases. So let's add a bunch more cheeses. Give each of them a random speed and loop them all around the screen. It's quick to do, who can resist? We'll put the cheeses in a list. And to put a smile on players' faces, we'll put them in random places. The things that player might adore include the addition of a score. We'll count the cheese the player escapes and draw the score up, wizard japes. We can use a sprite font for the text and sound effects. Whatever next. The last thing I can think to say is thanks so much to XNA. Final game demo. This is it. And then we'll see how, how good people are at this game uh, and whether they care or not is the other thing, of course. So we'll go into here. That's not where I want to be, is it, Robert? That'll work better. I think I got dressed up for this. Oh, dear. My career's obviously going really well, isn't it? <laughs> if you think about it, 30 years in the business and I'm reduced to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's OK. It's so I'm selling it, am I? Good, that's what I wanted to hear. As long as I'm selling it, that's fine. So, gamepad. Game. OK. <laughs> Meet each other. So the idea is that the game will start and just drop straight to the game over. If I press the start button, and watch this because I'm quite good at this. Oh. <laughs> and we'll try that again. Boom. Wee. Miss it there, and then there, and then ooh, and then there, and then there, and then ooh, and then there. 29. Anyone think they can beat 29? Fine. OK. <laughs> Audience participation, when will it start? So basically, what we have is a really simple bit of code that makes something which actually, you could spell O, you could spend time, oh, 29 again, that's interesting. Moo, try there. No. One of the things that you probably spot is that the layer of the game is the same every time, although I can't do it. And I've managed to, oh no, it's not going to work. I've managed to figure out there's a path through here, which I can get it right. Ah, 26, I'm going backwards. <laughs> the interesting thing about that, said the man who'd spent four hours playing it this morning, he lied, <laughs> is it actually does get quite compulsive if you have a sort of fairly limited disposition. Uh, two words spring to mind. What are those two words? Anyone know? One of them's flappy. What's the other one? Bird. That's remarkably like Flappy Bird, and it's all teeny tiny. Uh, and uh, you're all really impressed, and you all cheered like mad, and thanks so much for that. And I'll take pity applause along with any other kind. I don't mind. Let's go. Final game demo. The completed game's more complex, true. A background to replace Cornflower Blue. A start button to play once more. And for bragging rights, 
we have a score. But when you get right down to it, there's nothing here that doesn't fit. With simple programs of the sort, we've all seen lots of times before. If you've never written games before, they are a new world to explore. And unlike proper applications, they don't have cast iron specifications. If a game goes wrong in any way, you just say, that's part of the gameplay. They let you fiddle around with code. It can even be fun when they explode. The path to coding can be tricky. You have to master some things icky. But if you want things to be OK, I'd simply say, use XNA. Is everybody happy? Are you going to clap at the end? That's the end then. Clap. Jolly girl. Thank you. But we haven't finished yet. Plastic tags, OK? Here's how it's going to work. You could win a Ferrari or a killer robot. Go ooh. ooh. Like when they do it on point. When there's, the prize this week is £1,000 and you'll go ooh. That's 500 quid each. Ooh. And I'm, yes, fair enough, moving on. So, get your tags out, inspect them carefully. No two are the same except the identical ones. Okay, so what I'm after, is your tag round on top? Are the top three layers of your tag round underneath it? So you've got three round things on top of the tag. Does it look a bit like this? Anybody here got a tag like this? There's a guy in the back that does. Give him a big round of applause. He's just won a Ferrari. Are you going to sit there while I bring your tag to you? Or are you going to come, come and get your Ferrari? Give this guy a big round of applause. He's a big winner. Your Ferrari, sir. So, so, Keep it below 90 in first. Look, please, you've received it. We'll give you a big round of applause. And all the action now is, is moving towards who gets to win the remote control killer robot. Uh, I had a tiebreaker. We didn't need that. Um, let's move on to the next thing. Is your tag square on top? Yes. yes. Are the next three layers round? <laughs> Does it look a bit like this? Anybody in here? Square on top, three. Oh, Maggie sounds so sad. If only you'd pick that other one. <laughs> have, you got, have you got one like that? Yes? And you come, round of applause for the winner. And he's coming down, and I'll just have a quiet drink, dressed, dressed for the occasion. Fantastic. You, sir, have through cunning deviousness and dumb luck. <laughs> I think we'll settle with the dumb luck. You have one yourself. A remote-controlled killer robot. Ooh. So please be, play nicely with it. OK, no taking over the world. Thank you very much. Good stuff. Yeah, and that was the tiebreaker. Yes, I need it. OK, well, that's uh, all I can say is thank you very much for coming. All of you, I hope you found it useful and educational and even got a laugh at some point. I shall never wear these clothes again. I'm going to go home and burn them now, <laughs> although I might take them off first. <laughs> uh, and so, well, thank you so much for coming. Uh, feel free to sponsor me again if you're that impressed. Uh, I'll put some more money in the bucket on the way out. That would be wonderful as well. But thank you so much for coming. Oh, one thing, I take a picture of my audience every time. Uh, so what I must do is find my camera and do just that. So I'll, I'll use the fat camera, which is this one here. So uh, if you don't want to be in the picture, then uh, assume the position. I'll take the lens cap off, which improves, <laughs> improves the chances massively. Oh, big lens makes it look even quieter than it was. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, maybe I'll see you in two years' time. Maybe I won't. This might be the only two-to-one we ever do. OK, but thank you anyway. Thank you. Thank you.